Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, Claudia. Claudia, what are you standing over there at the window mooning about? I'm not mooning, I'm looking. I don't see what you can be seeing out that window. It's pitch black out tonight. That's it, exactly. I couldn't see anything. I've never seen anything as dark as this night. Well, come to bed. I'm sleepy. Ooh, too hot for blankets. I'm sleepy, too. Oh, so far away. What so far away? Everything. From this bedroom window, there's no other world at all. No? At least not within sight or reach. It's as if in this house we were alone in the middle of nowhere. As Jared Tucker would say, taint so. Taint? Taint so, taint so tall, for taint. taint. No. <laughs> oh, I suppose it just feels this way because we spent last night in New York and everything's so near in New York. New York, if you want my opinion, is claustrophobic. My, what a big word for a sleepy man. Mm-hmm. Almost woke me up saying it. Is it late? <laughs> yes, let's see. It's, well, it's past midnight. Midnight? Mm-hmm. Goodness, how'd you get to be so late so early? What happened to 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock? They went down to the corner to get a Coke. They did? Mm-hmm. I didn't even notice them going. They uh, tiptoed out very quiet. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Do you suppose anybody else in Eastbrook is up and awake? Well, I'm neither up nor awake. No, I guess everybody else is asleep. I didn't see a single light burning while I looked out the window. Quit yawning. You make me yawn. Mm. You said before that you didn't see anything at all. Funny feeling. Everything far away. Uh. No world at all beyond the windowsill. David, give me your hand. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's better. Good night, darling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. I yes. think I heard something. Yeah. Was I dreaming? You wasn't dreaming. David, what do you suppose it is? Oh, you can't imagine. I guess I'd better get up and find out. Mm. All right, all right. I'm coming. I'm coming. coming. Don't you give a man a chance to put on his... Where is yeah. the slipper? Here, here. I'll put on the light, darling. Ouch! It's bright. Oh, my goodness. It's half past two. I wonder who it is, what it is. Well, the last thing I remember is you're saying that everything was so far away that we com- were completely isolated from the world. Are you blaming me for the knocking on your door at this hour of the night? What's <laughs> my fault? Yeah. So queer. David, I'm coming with you. Now stop being an alarmist. It's probably somebody asking for the directions to Broadway and 48th Street. <laughs> Or the nearest justice of the peace. Then I'm certainly coming down with you. <laughs> Asking for directions at this hour of the night, honestly. I'll give them a piece of my mind, I will. Well, now, don't be too generous. David, put on the light before you open the door, darling. I don't know. I just don't know what I'd do without your brilliant advices, Mrs. Norton. I hope all this doesn't wake Mama. David, can you see who it is? It must give you a queer feeling in the middle of the night, doesn't it? The rest of the world asleep, far out there in the dark beyond reach. Oh, hush up, hush up. Uh, sorry, I, I had to wake you, sir. That's all right. What can I do for you? I'm Dick Stevens. I, I live down on the other side of Eastbrook Center. Stevens, his father publishes the weekly, doesn't he? Don't? You've had an accident. Your forehead's cut. <laughs> it's an awful time of night, isn't it? Forget it. Come on in the house. Well, I... I hate it to now wake stop you up. Stop apologizing but... and come on in the living room. Well, I, I don't want, want to disturb you. Could, could I just use your phone? Of course you can, but, but couldn't we... Well, what's the matter? Oh, my arm. Can you move it? I, I don't know exactly. Take it's... it easy. Uh, my, my car's in the ditch down the road a little ways. Now, here. Sit down. Sit down right there. I, easy now. I blew, uh, a, blew a tire. I guess I, I was going pretty fast. And you lost control? I'm not sure exactly what happened, but... David's right. You you sit down right this minute. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just call a cab and let you folks get now back to... Now, you'll do nothing of the sort. It won't. Oh, I'm stiff. My shoulder. Here, put this pillow back there. Cut on his forehead. Oh, 
There is. I, I didn't know. David, make him sit down. Come on, come on. Take it easy now. I'll lie back. I, I guess I do feel kind of wobbly. Oh, you bet you do. D- does your head ache? Oh, a little. Uh, I guess I must have hit it against the windshield. Uh, darling, call Dr. Barry. No, no, not not at this hour. Don't call Dr. I'll Barry. I'll call him right away. Oh, it's, it, it's nothing. If, if, if you just phone for a cab, I'll, I'll go home and... Now, you do what we say, young man. No monkey business. Well... Yours was the only house I could see, and I... stop talking. Now try, try breathing more deeply. That's it. That's it. Now relax. Just relax. Just, just starting to feel... Oh, gosh, I'm dizzy. The room's going around. David, should I tell him to come over? Uh, I'll talk to him. Funny, you must... You must be asleep. It's still ringing. Here's the receiver, darling. Thank you. How is he, Jim? I don't know. I don't think it's too bad on the outside, but you can never tell. Sure, he seems worse than he did when he came in. Mm. Shot, probably. Mm. Hello, Doctor Barry speaking. Uh, Doctor Barry, this is David Norton calling. Yes. Trouble with the baby? No, no, he's all right. But uh, young Dick Stevens is here. Young Dick? Mm Mm-hmm. What's he doing gallivanting around the country this time of night? Well, he had a car accident down the road. He got himself up to our house. Is he badly smashed up? Uh, it's hard to tell, Doctor. He seems to be suffering from the shock. Any bleeding? Not much. Uh, cut on his forehead and his left arm. A little headache and his shoulder pains him. Seems a little short-winded. Keep him still. Loosen his clothes. Get him on his back. I'll be over in a few minutes. Right. And don't give him anything to drink. All right, Doctor. Well? Dr. Barry will be over in a few minutes. Looks as if he's drowsed off. Good. We just won't disturb him. Mm. The doctor will be over. Now, don't you want to go back to bed? I do not. David, I I can't believe all this is happening. It is all right. In the middle of the night like this? It's frightening, isn't it? It's so peaceful in the country. Hmm? (laughs) More things happen when you expect them least. Well, I guess all we can do now is wait for Dr. Barry. Now, son, take a deep breath. That's right. <clears throat> Breathe. Mm-hmm. How does that feel? It's sort of catches under my arm. Mm. I think that's all right. Now, Dick, where does your arm hurt you? My elbow. Want to bend it, Dr. Barry? But you can bend it, eh? Well, it... It's getting stiffer. Cheer up. It'll probably get a whole lot stiffer. How's your head? Not so good. Uh, David, uh, give me my black bag from the chair. Here you are, Doctor. Yeah, black bag, sort of a traveling drugstore, isn't it, Dr. Barry? That's what I call it. And has done a lot of traveling. Yes, sir. There isn't a family in miles around here that doesn't recognize this bag of mine as well as my face. <laughs> now, son, turn your head around. Take it easy. I'm not going to hurt you. How long is it since I've been taking care of you? Oh, gosh, I, I remember you since... Oh, well, you're practically the first person I do remember. It's no wonder. I brought you bawling your head off right into this here world. Easy. I inoculated you, vaccinated you, took out your tonsils, took care of your measles and chicken pox. And... Doctor, how soon does our son start getting vaccinations and such? Pretty soon, I think. Good. You know, I wouldn't mind if Dr. Barry were his first memory, too. I hope Dick's going to be all right. I'd hate to have to call his mother and... and stop worrying now, one thing at a time. Mm. Well, son, <clears throat> I think you got off pretty easy. You got yourself pretty well shaken up, but you managed not to break any bones or crack your skull. I'm starting to feel as if I had... A couple of hours, and you'll probably feel even worse. But you live, <clears throat> so you've got nothing to complain about. Say, I'm not complaining... I... Just glad there wasn't a telephone pole in that ditch. Is there anything special we should do, Doctor? Well, I suggest that Dick here get himself right into bed. No more driving around tonight. What about his spending the night here? Oh, I don't mind him driving home. Your family home, Dick? Well, Mom's away. I, I was on my way back from driving her to Boston. But Dad's home. Why don't we just call him up and tell him what happened without worrying him? And then you can spend the night with us. 
I'll save Dr. Barry a trip, and we'll be sure everything's all right for this. Well, it's up to him. I'll prescribe. I'm the medico here. I'll prescribe a night with the Nortons for you, Dick. Your mother's away, but Mrs. Norton will keep her eyes on you. I, I better call Dad. I, I wouldn't want him to worry in the morning. I'll call your father, Dick. Uh, the phone's out in the hall, Doctor, on the stairs. Thanks. I, oh, gee, I feel as if I'd played too much football or something. <laughs> Is there anything special I should do, Dr. Uh, give him one of these pills with a hot cup of tea. Mm -hmm. He'll sleep all right and wake up a whole lot more chipper in the morning. I'm certainly relieved you came out to see him. Well, I've known this boy a long time. And his family, too. Good people, the Stevens. Well, that's the first time we've met him. Oh, one way or the other, you'll meet everyone around here. How would you like something to eat before starting home? Hmm? No, thanks. <clears throat> no middle-of-the-night snacks for me anymore. <clears throat> but uh, while I'm here, anybody else need medical treatment? We're all fine, Knockwood. <laughs> Even the cat and the dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of talk I like. <clears throat> and the baby? It's getting enormous. He looks like David. Uh, there's a slight resemblance around the left ear, Dr. Barry. <laughs> That's as far as it goes. I'll judge for myself. <laughs> I'm coming to call on the young man, uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day. You better warn him. Well, I'll be getting home. Mrs. Barry needs her sleep, and she won't have any of it until I'm safe in bed myself. I should think you'd be needing some sleep yourself, Doctor. I learned to go without it many years ago. Thanks ever so much for coming. Now, any more trouble with Dick, just call me. Well, there won't be any need, I'm sure. Well, Dr. Barry, now more than ever, I'm glad we settled in Eastbrook. <laughs> glad you did myself. Good night. Good night. Oh, isn't it a relief, darling, that everything's all right? Mm. Such a dark, quiet night. We were remote from the world, all alone from the universe. <laughs> Aren't you ever going to let me forget my one little excursion into poetry? The world is so far away. On our doorstep. Right in our house. <laughs> That's living in the country. Whether you're planning a handsome buffet supper or a casual informal evening with just a snack, there's one thing that you can always count on to belong, and that's ice-cold Coca-Cola. And that's true whether the guests are young or old. When you speak of Coke, you think at once of hospitality, the easygoing, enjoyable kind, the kind of hospitality that lets you join your guests for the pause that refreshes. Mr. King, while I'm up and around, how are you feeling? Me? Oh, ship shape. No splinters, scratches, or bites? No. Clean nothing. bill of health, huh? Hmm? Fine. Mrs. Barry is waiting, Doctor. Well, I'm on my way. Better get some sleep. I promised to take Mrs. Barry to the movies tonight. Uh, maybe you'll see uh, Claudia and David there. Oh? Why? All I know, Claudia's planning it in the back of her mind, so. Well, see you then, Dr. Barry. Goodbye. Or rather, good night, Mr. King. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>